well done okay so last sunday we were talking about how to uh, how important it is to have uh, will right will power because when you have will power whatever you speak it happens do you understand because when you say i will i will do this and you make sure you do it then you have such power that whatever you speak starts happening in your life amen i understand it it's very important you know uh, many people have this habit you know they it's not i wouldn't say that there's a little bit of uh, echo just uh, i wouldn't say uh, it's of ill ill intent but many people have this habit you know i will do this i will do that they have high dreams okay that's good that's good that's good they have high dreams i will do this i will do that and because they have high dreams what happens is uh mostly we say i will do this i will do that i will do this and then we don't we are not able to do it do you understand what i'm trying to say right we have high dreams especially when it comes to the kingdom when it comes to the church we say i will do this for you uh, i will do this for the ministry i will do this i remember people were used to tell me uh, you know brother if i get to go to uk i will give you a new camera <laughs> the person went to uk now almost 12 years no camera <laughs> you understand when you say that what happens is when you say i will and especially when it comes to uh pertaining to an anointing you have to be very careful when you and that's why it's very important to speak truth if you are a person who always speaks truth whatever you say will happen It becomes a prophecy do you understand if you are a person who always speaks truth always on the side can you put this light on there's a light so that the camera ah that's good lovely because now when you have when you when you speak and you do you you carry authority and that authority is recognized by the angels so when you speak the angels react you understand and so why you see when i prophesy it happens do you understand how do you carry a prophetic anointing you have to carry to carry the prophetic anointing you have to always think thousand times before you speak see the bible talks about the word of god if you speak it it will happen right the bible talks about life and death is in the power of the tongue But not for everybody for that to happen you need to carry authority and authority comes when there is will power when you learn to control your will do you understand once you know how to control your will once you tame your tongue always to speak the truth then whatever you speak will happen do you understand see i've heard i i know people who will prophesy details about you what is there right now in your fridge i know those kind of people but when they prophesy nothing happens do you understand because that authority is not there there's will power is not there there's there's not enough of prayer that is uh, that has fueled that prophecy 
when you speak you have to be true to your heart do you understand you know when i prophesy or whenever i try to give something tell some something to an advice to somebody i have this habit i will process it 10 100 times and then i will give it process it means am i telling this this is the question i always ask myself am i telling this prophecy to impress the person am i giving this prophecy to control the person am i giving this prophecy and telling this or giving this advice because i have a hidden agenda i will ask this question and then i will prophesy you understand that means i will try to be true to my heart align my tongue to my heart if the tongue is true to your heart and then you speak it will happen are you with me okay so this is just recap of last time what we were doing is i just gave you an exercise last week how do you improve on your will power the will power is the most powerful if you miss the sermon go and watch it's on the youtube you have to write down few list and make sure you do it and then your will power starts becoming stronger and stronger and stronger so if you say i will do this pick up some few things and say i will do this and make it do it i will not do this and don't do it and then your will power will start strengthening up amen? amen okay but today i want to talk to you very very uh, important uh, word let's go to exodus chapter 20 and let's read this verse 8 it says Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no, no, do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates for in 6 days the lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day therefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and hallowed it amen now very important today is you have to understand our life and the first commandment these are the 10 commandments in the exodus and the first command first commandment it says you shall worship you shall not worship right <laughs> you are confusing me let's read it right it says i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me okay what it is telling us is uh, first let's look at into our life you if you see your life a life is always under influence and control do you understand and that what controls you and influences you becomes your god right am i right <laughs> that what controls and influences you becomes your god and one of the most imp- there are a couple of things you know when we read this uh, commandment and say you shall have no other god immediately we think about statues and idols and all those things pictures and all what we need to really see is not the stat these are these are these are just surface level gods when you say god god means the one who controls your life and what god is saying there should be no one that controls your life are you with me there should be nothing that controls your life 
And so when you read that, we have to find out what is controlling my life. The whole world right now is controlled by two things. Tell me. The whole world is under control of by two things. Tell me what it is. No, 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 it's not controlled by Antichrist, not by Elon Musk, not by Trump or somebody else. It is controlled by two things. Yeah? Yeah. One, one thing you got right. One is money. That's right. And above all, there is, it is controlled by another thing. Can you tell me? The whole world. The whole world. The earth. Controlled by... Huh? No, 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 no. It's controlled by time. Are you with me? Exactly that time, day will happen. Exactly at that time, night will happen. Are you with me? 10 o'clock will happen at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 5 o'clock will happen at 5 o'clock. And the whole world is controlled by this thing called as time. This three dimensional world, this cosmos is controlled by this world is controlled by something called as time. Are you with me? You are controlled by time. This service is controlled by time. Tell you five o'clock service. Right? Everything is controlled by time. Tomorrow, exactly, there's a certain time you will all wake up. I'm not saying it is bad. I want to come to a point. All will run to the jo job. All will wait for the clock to get tick. And then, then to see what time it is. And then leave the job, workplace, right? Your children, you have to send them exactly on time. You'll eat your food on time. You are controlled by time. And you're controlled by... <laughs> Do you understand? And so when God created the whole cosmos, the, the earth, he told, listen, Monday to Fridays, or Sunday to Friday, whatever, six days, listen, you are going to be controlled. And that's fine. But on Saturday, I want you to take rest. Now the rest is not what God is focusing on. What God was trying to say, listen, since you're controlled, since you're fully mechanical, controlled by your work, controlled by your children, controlled by everything, on one day, you have to take control. Are you with me? And that, when you take control, signifies that you are not worshipping even time. Even time cannot control you. You are not worshipping time. Are you with me? You are not under the control of time. That's not your God. I am God. And so, he says, make sure that on the seventh day, you make it holy. Now, what does holy mean? Set apart. That's right. Holy means you set it apart. When you say anointing, what does anointing mean? When I say anoint you, I anoint you. When David was anointed as a king, what does it mean? Anointing means you are set apart. You are set separate to be a king. 
And so when he's saying, make sure the seventh day you set it apart and make it holy means you set it apart and you don't do what you used to do. To show that you are not controlled by anything, rather now you are in control. And so you give that, he says, to God. Do you understand? Today's, what was the topic? I put it on the poster. What was the topic? Put it on the poster. Portals of blessing. I'm going to teach you today how you can open doors, portals, doors for God's blessings to come into your life. Do you understand? How can you open doors for God's blessings to come into your, into your life? See, when God created everything, He called Adam and Eve and said, Now I give you authority and dominion over the world. Do you understand? So, who has authority and dominion all over the world? Not the devil, you. Can, where, where is it? Can you find out? There you go. It says, Be fruitful and multiply, chapter 1. Fill the earth and subdue it. Everyone says subdue it. Subdued. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So now you have dominion. So the key to the door is in your hand. You have the authority. Are you with me? Now, that means key for your success is with whom? God or you? Correct. It's with you. Key to your finances is with whom? God or you? Key to your blessing is with whom? With you. And now if you want God to intervene and access the area of your finances, area of your family, area of your relationship, you need to give that access to God. Do you understand? You have to open the door. That's why Jesus says, I am at the door, knocking at the door. Whoever opens the door, I will come in and what? Dine with him. Is it there in the Bible? Right. Is it there? Yes or no? Come on. Yes. I, I want to show you, you know how, you know, let's go to James chapter 2 verse 10. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to a little bit here and there. Look at James chapter 2 verse 10. James chapter 2, somebody if you, yeah, there you go. Is it there? Yeah, for whoever, everyone say with me, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay, in simple English it says, Whoever keeps all the commandments, but misses one, has broken all the ten. Correct? How many commandments? Ten commandments. When you break one, means you have broken all the ten. This is a principle. One signifies all. It's a spiritual principle. Do you understand? Are you with me? That means one signifies all. The micro signifies the macro. Are you with me? Now, therefore, listen to this. You make it vice versa. You do one thing, you give it all for God. In other words, you give one thing, one signifies all. So when you give one thing, it signifies all. 
Do you understand? God wanted one man to sanctify all. Hello. Jesus became that one man, rest all became holy. Do you understand? All did not have to die on the cross. One man died on the cross, rest all died along with him, in him. One man became holy, rest all who believe in him became holy. One signifies all. Are you with me? I'm coming to a point. Are you with me? Okay. That means when you give God something, God takes excess of everything. Can you, can you repeat with me? When you give God something, God will take excess to everything. Because that something becomes a portal or a doorway for blessing to come on everything. Are you with me? Are you understanding? And so this is there in the entire Bible. If you see, when a person gives one day of one week to God, what happens? All the weeks are blessed. All the days of the weeks are blessed. Are you there? You give one week, one day of the week to the Lord. Now that one day becomes a portal. It becomes a doorway for God to come and have access to all the days. And so all the days gets blessed. How do you come out of the influence of all those things? How do you make God God? When you give that one thing to God, that one part of the seven, seven days, you are saying now the seven days have no control over me. It is now God who is in me have control over the seven days. Do you understand? Are you with me? The richest people on earth, who are the richest people? The Jews. The Jews are the richest people on earth. What they do, they observe that one day. Do you understand what it means? Do you understand? Now listen, what used to happen every 50 years, after every 50 years, they call it Jubilee year. On the 50th year, that whole year, they will release their slaves. They will release in the Old Testament. They will release their slaves. They will give their properties that they bought. They will not harvest. You understand in the Old Testament. That means, you know what happened? One year of COVID. How much of economical crisis you went through? Are you with me? How many people lost their jobs? One year of COVID. Here, they are purposefully almost having something like that. No jobs. No harvest. No slaves. After 50 years. Jubilee year. It's called a Sabbath Jubilee year. No slaves. No harvest. Literally, they are going, they are infusing a economical crisis. You understand? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But look, they are saying this year, that year is for God. Yet they become the richest people on earth. Why? Because they show. That the world has no, the, the world, the matrix of the world has no control over them. Rather, they have control over it. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? So when they give that one year, God blesses all the years. And lifts them up. Do you understand? 
And so if you notice the Old Testament, the Jewish way of doing things, they will give everything, part of everything to God. They will sanctify it. They will sanctify it. How do you sanctify? Give that one thing because when you give that one thing, rest all becomes sanctified. Do you understand? How do you sanctify seven days of your week? Give that one day. How do you sanctify your time? Because if you don't give, you have made the days of the week, the time, your God. Do you understand? Why were the Jews so strict about the Sabbath? Why were the Jews so strict about tithing? Let's talk about it. Hello. You know what's tithing, right? They would give one tenth of their produce to God. Are you with me? Because I don't believe in tithing. You understand? But I believe in tithing. <laughs> what do I mean? I believe in giving it to God. I don't believe in that it should be 10% only. Do you understand? It should be according to your conscience. How much to give, your conscience should decide. It should come out of your heart because the Bible says God gives, God loves a cheerful giver. How much percentage I should give to God should be decided from within you. Are you with me? But the concept of giving it to God is very important because when you give money, He will bless all the rest of it. Do you understand? When you honor God, that particular amount, and you say, God, this is what I'm going to give you. When you give it, now you are saying, God, the doors of my finances, the portal of my finances are open for you to come and take, take over and sanctify all my money. Sanctification was... Anointing, sanctification, separation was what God does all the time in the Old Testament. And people do all the time, right? In every area. How would they recognize themselves as Jews? Every area. How would they recognize themselves as Jews? How would they affiliate themselves as Jews? Circumcision. Do you understand? When the child was born, some percent of that circumcised was, become, was an offering to God. So that the whole person is now separated for God, sanctified for God. Do you understand? I'm not promoting circumcision here. I'm just trying to explain to you something. That when you give something from you everything is becoming God's now do you understand but if you keep on holding it the more you hold on to it the more that thing starts controlling you and it becomes your God do you understand why we people See, everything has become easy now, right? It's easy for me. If it was 100 years back, for you to come from your house to here, it would have taken 30 minutes, one hour. Right or wrong? Today you can come in 5-10 minutes. Right? Everything has become easy. To wash your clothes, it would take you one hour, two hours. Today, you don't even have to spend few minutes. Press a button, it happens. Everything has become easy. Everything is fast, correct? But yet, we don't have time. 
Hello? Everything is fast, everything is easy, but yet I don't have time. Am I right or wrong? Why you don't have time? Because time is controlling you. We don't have time because time is controlling us. We don't have time because time is God. No one looks at time as God. Time has become our God. And so it's very important we learn to give up time. Make it a portal, an opening and say, God, now this time is yours. That's why prayer every day is important. Because when you decide every day I'm going to spend this half an hour or one hour in prayer and this one hour nothing is going to control me. It's going to be completely for you God. Now trust me God sanctifies and he has hand over all the time that you have in your life. And then you will see everything will happen according to God's time. Do you understand? Why things are getting delayed in your life? Why things are not happening in your life? It's because you are not controlling time. Time is controlling you. And then you pray to God, God, why things are not happening? God says, give your time. Give it in my hand. I will start working in your life. In that area of your life. When it comes to finances... You know, many people ask me, Brother, can you pray for finances? Do you understand? I cannot pray for finances until and unless you give your finance to God. Are you with me? Are you understanding me? I cannot pray for finances until and unless you give it to God. The moment you give it to God and give him access to your finances, now I can pray. Do you understand? That is one thing. It cannot happen through prayer. Do you understand? You cannot be financially blessed through prayer. If you are going through financial problem, don't think you will pray, pray, pray and financial situation will get solved. It doesn't happen. It's like you are holding your finances, your situation and you are telling God, come God, work in it. But you are not allowing God to come into it. So, how do you open the door? How do you give him access? Give something out of it to him. Then he has access and control over your finances. Now he will do a miracle. Do you understand? For the fish and bread to multiply, somebody had to give the fish and bread to God. Offer it up. Jesus could have lifted up empty baskets. And the empty baskets, if he wanted, he could lift it up empty baskets. Empty baskets would turn into fish and bread. But he didn't lift up empty basket because he knows it can't turn. He had to take somebody's little basket of bread and fish. Do you understand? Then he could multiply it. Jesus could, his first miracle, he could go to the empty jars and say, okay, wine, come up. Hello, can I tell you something? But wine didn't come into the empty jars. He had to put water into it and then the water turned into wine. Something has to be offered for God to do a miracle. Are you with me? 
Are you understanding? You have to give an excess, open a doorway, open a portal for miracles to happen in your life. Miracles don't happen just like that. You have to give something. An excess. Everyone say excess. Do you understand? When people come to me and say, pray for my finances, I say, I pray, okay, fine. But I know it won't happen. <laughs> I know they will not get blessed. I'll pray just to make them happy. You understand? For them to get blessed, this has to come out. Look at that, uh, Matthew. Look, look, we are, we think this idols are idol, this statues are idol worship. This is all rubbish. Listen to me. <laughs> Real idol worship is this. You understand? Statues are not idol worships. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters, right? Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. A God or mammon it says. All of us are controlled by money. Are you with me? The day we, how do you say the money, how do we say money doesn't control me? The widow was into financial problem. You know the widow's might, right? The only coin she had, she gave it. But the only coin she had was not hers. <laughs> Hello? Because she's not earning. The only coin she had is somebody else given to her. But yet she gave that. Are you with me? She did not allow God, she did not allow that coin to be her God. She allowed God to be God. She did not allow that coin to control her. That was the only coin she had. She did not allow the coin to control her. Are you with me? How many of us are calculative? The reason why I don't like the concept of one tenth is because of this. I got by the end of the month, one, two, three, ten percent, count, count, count. Uh, this goes to my SIP, this goes to my mutual fund, this is a fixed deposit, this goes to my, this rent, that rent, then rent, and this goes to my 10% to God. Do you understand? You have calculated the money. In other words, when you calculate the money, that means the money is still controlling you. Are you with me? When do you come out, when you come out of calculations and say, I give to God, now you have come out of control. Do you understand? When you come out of calculation, you come out of control. And then you say, God, you are the true God. The Jews, everything, 
Everything, their first fruit, the first fruit they would bring and they would say, God, this is yours. Because when they would give the first fruit of their, of their finances or whatever, they know the rest of the fruits are blessed. Are you with me? When they gave their one ten, they know rest of it is blessed. Now they, that one tenth has become a portal for God to now enter in. Are you with me? The first fruit has become a portal for God to enter the rest of the, their finances. That one Sabbath is portal for God to enter the rest of the seven days. Do you understand? If you don't open that portal, what happens is you will be controlled by time, you will be controlled by money. There's two things. How do you know? How in other philosophies They believe that the planets, the stars control you. Are you with me? Do you understand? Astrology, if you study, they believe all the planet stars control you. And then they will say, you know, this season you are going to have hard time. Do you, this season, wrong, bad things are going to happen in your life. And then the person asks the astrologer, how do I get out of all this? And the astrologer then will give a lot of things. The planets are influencing you is because you are under control of them. Do you understand? The best and easiest way to come out of the control of planets and surpass that control is you start giving time to God. Do you understand? When you come for Sunday prayer, now the sun is not controlling you. S-U-N. The S-O-N is now controlling you. Do you understand? The Sunday becomes Son's Day. God's Day. The reason why S-U-N is controlling you is because and during S-U-N Day, you are at home sleeping, enjoying, watching Netflix and all that stuff. Are you with me? You are supposed to make that S-U-N day, S-O-N day. The day you make that S-O-N day, that son of God starts blessing all the days of your life. Are you with me? You got to decide who should control you. Either you, the sun should control you and define your destiny in your life. Are you with me? But you have another father who can control your life and his name is Jesus. Are you with me? Are you understanding? This is amazing, right? Don't make money your God. Is this is it's saying you are you can be slave of only two masters. S the word is slave means you can be controlled by only two people. How do you show? How do you show that money doesn't control you? You have to give. And when you give, don't calculate. Are you with me? You have to learn to give it to God. Don't calculate. 
Is it ten percent gross or net? Do you understand? Somebody I used to pe preach on tithing. Somebody asked me, brother, that ten percent should be gross. Ten percent or net ten percent? Really? Should it come after cutting all the taxes and all that, or of my PF and this or the? You see how much it has control over your life? Have you sat down and thought, there is a God that is controlling you? It's not the devil. It's money. It's time. When you come here for prayer and you say, God, in this time of prayer, 5 o'clock, I give it to you. You are setting time free. Are you with me? In other words, you are setting yourself free from the bondage of time. When you say, I give to God, I don't care how much it is in my pocket. But I give to God, I'm not going to calculate, I just give it to God. You are saying, I'm not under the calculative control of money. I'm under control of my God. Are you with me? And so everything in your life, I want you to sit back and see everything in your life. Who is in control? It might be time, it might be money, it might be food. Do you understand? It might be your husband, it might be your wife, it might be your children. Who is in control? Do you understand? Sometimes it's like, oh, I, this, this, is, this is what happens, you don't understand. Twelve years almost, no, for the church. People pray, brother, brother, Kazar Zalapura, Kazar Zalapura, Kazar Zalapura, Kazar Zalapura. After they get married, no news of them. You know why? Either the mother-in-law is in control, or the father-in-law is in control, or the husband is in control, or the children are in control. Are you with me? Somebody is in control that doesn't allow you to go for prayer. Hello. And so now that has been your God. Not the statue. <laughs> Not the statue. That's the last thing actually. The main things that are controlling you is these things. That's why if you see in the New Testament, they hardly talk about statues. The Old Testament was outside. The New Testament literally went in your heart and revealed the light of God. Do you understand? The Old Testament would say, okay, Sabbath, this, that, that. They didn't really know why God is telling them to keep one day free. Are you with me? Until Jesus comes in the New Covenant and New Testament and says, look guys, this is the reason. Do you, do you understand? I want you to go back to that. All right. I want you to sit back and say, how can I give, set myself free from the slavery of time? In other words, how can I give time to God so that now God has complete control over my time in life? Do you understand? The most powerful thing that you can give God, the most, the most precious thing that you can give God is your time. 
And the second most precious thing that you can give God is money. Because these are the two things that always keep control over your life. You open the doors of these two things and God comes in. Let me tell you, your life starts changing. Your life starts changing. You give yourself time for prayer, your life starts changing. You give your finances to God, you know. If you give mango, God will bless only mangoes, right? Correct. If you sow a mango seed, only mango plant will come, right? Anybody got chiku? Nothing. You put mango seed, mango plant will come. But money is the only thing that you put with an intention of anything, anything else can come. Do you understand? Do you understand what I said just now? You put mango, only mango will come. But money is something, if you give it with some other intention. Because money controls everything of your life. Do you understand? When you give money, suppose you want to, you're praying for, let's say you're praying for healing. But if you give money to God and say, God, bring healing into my life. God will, it, it can be, still be a door. Because money is connected to everything in your life. Do you understand? Your time is connected to everything in your life. These two things have no specific DNA. Do you understand? It can change its DNA. Only other things have DNA. Sometimes I wanted an anointing, I didn't have to pray. You understand, in a, in a church, if you see this gold dust happening, all this thing happening, right? I didn't pray for gold dust, fasting and prayer. Do you understand? It just happens. I didn't pray for some of these things. I sowed finances. And it happened. Some things, your prayer can be converted into finances and given to the Lord. Do you understand? It doesn't have DNA. Money doesn't have DNA. Time doesn't have DNA. You give your time, you give your money to God. It loses control over your life. And then you are in control of your time. You are in control of your finances. Do you understand? The reason delays are happening in your life is because you are not in control of your time. All this Rahu, Shani, all these things are in control of you. Do you understand? How do you come up? How do you transcend? How do you become the son of God? You can't become the son of God if you are in control of S-U-N. You can have only two fathers. You can either have that father or that father. Do you understand? I'm not saying it. People might cut clip and put me in jail. Decide which father's son you are. Which father's son you are? Are you with me? Okay. So tonight I wanted to share with you this. And I want you to go back, sit back, and want you to sit and look into every area of your life. I want you to see if there is any God that you have made for yourself. Is that anything that is controlling your life? And if time has more priority than worship, then you are worshipping a wrong God. If your money has more priority than giving it to God, 
then you are worshipping a wrong God. Straight into your heart. You know, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Old Testament was works. Works. That means all external doing. The New Testament is heart. That means you have to check deep into your heart why you do what you do. Do you understand? That becomes true worship. That's why it says, the time is come when you will worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth does not mean just the letters in the Bible. Truth means you're going into your heart and knowing why you do what you do. Okay, 